Hey y'all, Pieces of Nika is back and this is my pregnancy update video. And I am officially in my third trimester. On my last pregnancy update video, I was 15 weeks. So now I am 28 weeks. I am officially seven months and I am in my third trimester. And I really can't believe how fast it's going. I'm glad because I'm ready to meet my little man. But um, between 15 weeks and up to now is what I'll be updating you on. So you might as well say this update is for the second half of my second trimester. That second, that other video I did was the first half of my um, second trimester. And this video will be speaking on some things that I went through towards the end of my second trimester. So if you're interested in finding out what i've been up to and what i've been going through then just keep on watching okay so i first want to talk about um when i was put on bed rest this was back in august i was officially 20 weeks then which i was five months as soon as i hit five months 20 weeks I felt a lot of pain in my lower stomach and if you watch my previous update video I talked about pressure that I was feeling in my lower stomach well that pressure turned into full-on pain like really sharp pains I couldn't really explain it I didn't know if it was contractions labor pains I don't know how to explain it but it was sharp pains in my lower stomach also like it felt like my entire insides was extremely sore so it would hurt me to um, roll over from my left side to my right side it hurt me every time I had to sit up or get up stand up from the sitting position all of that hurt it hurt me to walk to the point where I could barely walk. I just couldn't do anything. So once I told my doctor that, then she put me on bed rest. She told me to stay off of my feet and she told me to soak in Epsom salt and warm water, not too hot. And she also told me to um, take Tylenol with codeine. She prescribed that for me. You can only get that from the pharmacist. And she said it was safe for the baby because that was what I wanted to know. Codeine, like, is that okay for the baby? And she said yes. So um, she told me to start out taking one, but if the pain was really bad, to start out taking two. And then one after that every six hours or so. So I did do that. My mom, she came to stay with me. I was on bed rest for almost two weeks. It was like a week and a half. And my mom, she came to make sure that I stayed off my feet. And so basically for that whole week and a half, I was in this bed. The only time I got up was to go to the bathroom. And it was so painful to even go from the bed to the bathroom. It was just that painful. So I did exactly what the doctor told me to do. And after about that week, that second week ending, the pain slowly started to leave. Thank God because I didn't know what was going on. I was like, is he trying to come early? I was so scared. I didn't really know what was going on. But thankfully, the heating pad, the Epsom salt, because she told me to put the heating pad on my back, that worked tremendously but with the Epsom salt and the Tylenol with codeine. So but those three things helped that pain go away. So that next week after that, I went back to work but I was on pretty much light duty. So, you know, I have a sit down job, so I don't have to do a whole lot of strenuous work. So, excuse my dog, he's playing with his toy. But yeah, I don't have to do a whole lot of strenuous work, thankfully, because if I had to be on my feet all day for eight hours, I probably would have asked her to just keep me on bed rest because it hurts to stand for long periods of time without me feeling some type of pain. So that happened when I was 20 weeks. Okay, so after that, I started feeling pretty much like myself again. You know, I'm thinking, oh, cool. You know, I eat what I want now. I don't feel nauseated anymore. All the things that I was kind of feeling at first kind of went away. And then I reached 
my 28 week, which is where we are now. Well, here lately, I have been feeling some bikini line pain. I know I'm all over the place, but I am gonna kinda get an order going, but I wanna just basically start the order of talking to you all about the pains that I've been going through. Then I'll talk with you all about some other things. <laughs> but as far as the pain I'm feeling now is in my bikini line, and it's only on the right side, and it's like right in the joint of where the leg meets your pelvic area, right in that crease has been hurting so bad here lately and i called and asked her about that and she said it could be one or two things it could be round ligament pains or it could be the baby is sitting on a nerve because he is on my right side and you all know that i have fibroids so my fibroids are all on my left side so little parker is on the right side so he kicks me a lot on that side he rolls over a lot and he does everything on that side. So I'm thinking that's why I feel that pain only on the right side in that crease. So I've been back to what she told me to do when I was hurting when I was five months. I soak, I soak in Epsom salt every other night. I try not to do it every night. Every other night I soak in a tub of Epsom salt and I try to sit in there for about 20 minutes and just soak and then I would take my heating pad and instead of putting it on my back this time I would fold it in half and I would put it in the crease of my leg so I would kind of tuck it in there and just let it heat just heat it up for me and that helped a lot thankfully so yeah if any of you out there are in pain or have any type of pain I would say get you some Epsom salt and get you an electric heating pad. It does wonders, trust me, it does wonders. Now that I've done that, I've been taking just regular extra strength Tylenol. I haven't had to take the one with codeine as of yet because it's kind of painful, but it's not like it was when I was on bed rest. So I've been able to kind of deal with that pain. So yeah, that's what I've been dealing with here lately. And another thing I've been dealing with is being out of breath. I talked about that in my last video too. I'm still winded for no reason. Like I'm just sitting here talking to you all and I'm out of breath. And I don't know if you can hear me kind of like trying to catch my breath as I'm talking to you all. Yes, still out of breath. I'm guessing that's going to happen forever until he comes. But um, yes. I will insert a clip of me drinking the glucose medicine because when I hit 28 weeks, it was time for me to get my glucose checked. Thankfully, I passed that, thank God, because I didn't want to have to do the three hour one where they stick you in and you have to wait three hours and no. I waited my one hour. Drunk the stuff, waited my one hour, and they drew my blood, tested it, told me I passed my glucose, my levels were okay. So that means that I don't have gestational diabetes, which is something you can get when you're pregnant. And But the bad news is they told me that I'm slightly anemic, and so she has prescribed me some iron pills, which this past weekend I took those, and they made me feel so nauseated. So I told my husband, I don't want to take those anymore. I'm just going to go buy all iron and rich foods like spinach, steak, potatoes, candy, yams, raisin bran, um, shredded mini wheats, anything with extra iron in it. Even, I even got some black strap molasses because that's supposed to help with iron as well. So I'm going to do all of that. And I'm also going to ask her, would it be okay for me to cut that pill in half maybe? Because when I took it, I felt so sick all night and it woke me up out of my sleep. So I have to figure that out, how I'm going to get that iron peel down because I do have to get my levels up. She's going to check my levels every month from now until the time I have the baby. Because she wanted me to take that iron peel until I had the baby for the next three months. But I just don't want to feel like that. I haven't felt nauseated since my first trimester. So I'm like, I don't want to take that. I just don't. So I'm hoping that I can raise up my iron levels just by eating food. If any of you have been through this, can you please leave a comment below of 
what you did to raise your um, iron levels if you are anemic because I just I don't want to take those pills if I can do it naturally I'm down for that so just let me know if you know any ways to raise up your levels because I just really honestly hate swallowing pills I don't care if they're small or big I just don't want to swallow pills if it came in a gummy form which I may need to ask her if it does which it may not but I can do that and hopefully that won't make me sick but yeah that's what I've been going through as of late as far as bad news <laughs> and so some good things is I finally feel him kicking and moving around up in there and I want to insert a clip to show you him moving around in my stomach. And I just thought that was just so amazing and so weird at the same time. And it kind of slightly made my flesh crawl because, I don't know, it just feels weird to me. I'm still trying to get used to him moving around in there. It's like, I don't know. It's so weird and amazing at the same time. My doctor told me to make sure that I count his kicks because he should kick at least 10 times from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep at night. And if not, she wants me to call her immediately because something could be wrong. So I let her know that he kicks all day and all night. So yes, he's very active in there. As each day pass, I'm getting used to feeling him kick. So yeah, that's that. Um, let's see. As far as some things that I've been eating since now, I've been trying to get my iron levels up in the morning times if I'm not eating grits. I'm eating Raisin Bran or Frosted Shredded, shredded Mini Wheats. Sometimes I'll make me a bacon and toast sandwich, just plain bacon and toast with jelly. But I don't eat that a lot because I know bacon has a lot of sodium. So I've been trying to cut back on that. And as far as my lunch, I pretty much try to meal prep and eat my the same thing that I eat for lunch I usually eat for dinner so like this week I did me some steaks in the oven that I baked with um, yams and spinach so that has been my lunch and my dinner and if I'm not eating that then I'm eating just a spinach salad so yeah now as far as snacks I don't really too much eat many snacks but I did get oats and honey bars and I try to eat oranges and as much fruit as possible when I want a snack because fruit is so much better for you than candy. So yeah, that's what I do as far as my snacks. I'm still low on energy and I guess that's because I'm anemic. Like by seven o'clock, I'm usually already asleep and in bed. Like it's terrible. I'm sleeping now as usual. But I wanted to get this video out for you all who wanted to know how I was doing. Other than those bad things that I talked about in the beginning of this video. I've been doing good. I think I'm carrying him as good as I can possibly carry him. And you know, I'm just thankful to be able to carry him as far as I have. And not have any major problems. And you know I just thank God for that. I thank God for all of you all prayers. And you know I just can't thank you all enough for your support and prayers. Because I know there's power in prayer. And where would we be without it? Oh I also want to talk about where I start going to see another doctor. I have to see a maternal medicine doctor. Due to the fibroids that I have. And so when I go get my ultrasounds. They don't allow me to film my ultrasounds anymore. So I can't put in an ultrasound video. Because I can't film them anymore. So that sucks. But I do have to go see him every week. Now that I'm in my third trimester. That seems like a lot to go see a doctor that often. But it's what you have to do for the safety of your baby. They want to see you every week. To make sure that the baby's growing like it should. They want to make sure that he's um, there's nothing wrong with him in there. And they want to make sure that everything is okay. So I'll be going to see him and as well as my regular OBGYN. I see her every two weeks and I see the maternal medicine doctor every week. So yeah, that's going to be a lot of going to the doctor. But what else can I do? He has taken control of my body and I'm going to do what I have to do to make sure that he's okay. So, of course, you know, I'll be keeping you all updated on that. 
and I do also want to show you all what my stomach looks like now and you all will get to see how much bigger I've gotten since I'm seven months like it's like right around the corner that I'm gonna be having him so here is the front of my stomach the side the other side I am so much bigger than I was getting out there this line has came all the way up to here. This is baby Parker. And it still hadn't hit me yet that, wow, it's a baby in there. <laughs> a whole baby. <laughs> but I do plan on filming a what's in my hospital bag and what's in his diaper bag video. As soon as I get that together, you will see what I'm taking with me to the hospital, which I'm gonna be trying to get that bag ready because she said he can come at any time. Although I'm due January the 6th, 2017, he can come any time before that. So I wanna make sure that I am prepared. So yeah, um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I'm leaving out? I pretty much think I've talked about everything that I've pretty much gone through in my trimesters. <laughs> yeah that'll be it so i really thank you all so so much for watching this video and i want you to share it all with your family and friends who are with the child right now so maybe that some of these tips that i give can help them too and i just appreciate you all for watching thank you for leaving any comments that you do leave i do notice them and i'm so grateful that you watch my videos and that they are helpful to you and I just thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you in my next update video. Have a great day. Bye.